Hello, this is Doug Rumbaugh and welcome to episode 3 in my video series on web hosting. In the first video in this series we purchased a domain name and in the second video we set up a server. In this video we are going to bring the two together. The basic idea is this. Here I'm SSH into the server and you can see we did this by what's called the IP address. So every computer connected to the internet has either directly or indirectly an address just like this one that is associated with it and that's how that computer is identified. Now we as mere mortals and human beings aren't quite as good at working with numbers as computers are and so rather than memorizing a whole bunch of IP addresses to indicate what server we would like to talk to we use words instead. We use domain names. DNS, or the domain name system, is a way of associating the two. So what happens whenever you go to a website, like say, my website, is you type douglasrumbaugh.com into your web browser, hit enter. First thing that happens is this name, douglasrumbaugh.com, is sent to a DNS server, which takes the name and looks up the corresponding IP address. In order for this to work, we have to insert in or we have to create records in that lookup table indicating what IP address our web traffic should go to for our domain name. So if we take a look here, I have an IP address and I have a domain name, in my case douglasrumbaugh.xyz. So let's create the necessary records to associate the two. We're going to, I'm going to do this because I purchased my domain through Namecheap. I'm going to do this over here. Um, if you did not purchase your domain through Namecheap and you instead purchased it somewhere else, uh, you're going to have to figure out on your own what the associated screen is you need to get to to do the thing that I'm doing. But once you find the right spot, the actual process should be pretty much the same. So if you uh, purchased your thing through Namecheap, you want to make sure you're signed in and go to your dashboard. And this is going to give you a list of all of the domains that your account owns. Now the domain in question that I want to use for this is my douglasrumball.xyz. So I'm going to click Manage. This is the domain management page with a whole bunch of upsells and renewal stuff and, and whatever. Where I want to go actually is over here to Advanced DNS. So this is the advanced DNS configuration panel and this is where we are going to insert the records that are going to map our domain name to an IP address. Now to accomplish what I want to accomplish here we are actually going to need two records so we'll do both of those. You'll want to click add new record and we want an A record. There's a couple different types of record for example um, you have MX records that you use for mail stuff, text records is for adding just extra general information and so on, but A records are what we're going to use to map domain name to IP address. Now host, obviously our domain name is douglasrumbaugh.xyz, but you can actually use what are called subdomains. So for example, I could have douglasrumbaugh.xyz. I could have blog.douglasrumbaugh.xyz or store. right? And by using different A records for each one of these, I can send them to different places. So I, for my website, I'm interested in two specific records. I want just the bare domain, douglasrumbaugh.xyz, and because it's going to be a website, we also need to direct www. So I have two, I need the bare domain and the www subdomain. So to accomplish that, I'm going to have to add two records. Now Namecheap does not allow you to leave the host field blank. So for my bare domain, what you, what you have to type is an at symbol. And that at indicates just the bare domain, douglasrumball.xyz. And then into here, we want to put our IP address. This is the IP address of the server that we got with ifconfig earlier and what we've been using to SSH in. 
So this is going to redirect Douglas Rumbaugh dot XYZ. And I'm going to have to add a second record specifically for www dot Douglas Rumbaugh dot XYZ. Just like that. So we need those two records. And that should be it. So this can sometimes take a little while to uh, propagate. Uh, they say up to a day. Usually it happens much, much, much faster than that, though. <laughs> when, you when you do your initial insert of the record, in my experience, like before you've, the very first time that you do this, it's pretty much instantaneous every time that I've done it. However, sometimes if you want to update it, take the domain name and point it somewhere else when it's already pointed to a server. I found that takes a little bit longer to, to propagate. But we can now sit here and uh, test this out. So let me just toggle back to this domain page here and back again to make sure that it actually saved because it doesn't have a save button or apply or anything, which always makes me nervous. Looks like we're good to go. So how can we test this and see when it actually propagates? Well, I can actually do this. And substitute my domain name for the IP address in SSH. Because the host name changed, it's now the the domain name and not the IP address, um, it will reprompt the authenticity. So this is fine. And we're in. So just like that, we now can connect to my server over SSH by typing douglasrumball.xyz not using an IP address. How cool is that? And that is exactly what we need to have working for our website. Now, if I go to, right now, if I go to douglasrumbaugh.xyz, xyz, we're not going to see anything because I don't have the web server set up and running. But our next step in the next episode is going to be to configure that web server so that when I go to this, rather than seeing this site can't be reached, I actually see this. So that's it for this one. Relatively short in comparison, but not the world's most complicated of processes. Again, to review, you want to go to wherever it is that you're managing your domains, find the advanced DNS panel, and insert an A record, or two, I insert two A records, one for all subdomains and one explicitly for www. And the value associated with those A records should be the IP address of your server wait for it to propagate, and then you should be able to SSH into your server using your domain name rather than the IP address. Once you got that working, you should be ready to move on to actually stand up your web server. And we will do that next. So I hope you found this interesting. I'll see you in the next video.